on this week's edition of In Focus. Thank you so much for joining us this weekend. We'll be talking about the race for president after Saturday's South Carolina primary, but we're also getting the latest today from your local election headquarters on one of the biggest races on the ballot this year in Indiana, talking about the race for governor. Several candidates in that race in just about one month from now, we'll be hosting the first televised debate between the Republican candidates for governor right here in our studios. Some of the candidates have already appeared on stage together at various events, but this will be the first televised debate in one what's likely the most important race on the ballot here in Indiana this year. Five Republicans among those vying to be Indiana's next governor, including a sitting senator, our current lieutenant governor, former attorney general, and two former economic development leaders. We need to do something about our school system. We need to tear it down and get back to basics. If we don't do something different, don't expect the results to be different. And we make Indiana a no income tax state where people want to stay, people want to move. And our strategy in the past has been to go after large projects that even bring in more employment, when the real situation we have today is the attraction and retention of talent. I believe in, a, in an aggressive, offensive strategy to grow our economy, lift people up. All right, again, our debate airs a month from this coming week, Tuesday, March 26th at 7 p.m. It's the first of three televised debates with the Republican candidates for governor. And this week we're here with one of those candidates in the race for governor, Lieutenant Governor Suzanne Crouch. Thanks so much for joining us it's this week. It's great to be with you, Dan. You recently won a straw poll last week out in Henry County, but Mike Braun's internal polling has shown him ahead in this race so far. So as we move closer to these debates, including the one we're doing here next month, what are you hoping to accomplish on the debate stage to try and draw a contrast here for voters? Well, you know, I'm running for governor because I care deeply about Indiana and about Hoosiers. And I want to boldly lead Indiana into the future and protect our conservative values. And I have the passion, commitment, courage, and experience to deliver results for Hoosiers. We're going to do it by focusing on four building blocks. We're going to build our economy and we're going to eliminate the state income tax. We're going to ax the tax. We're also going to look at how do we strengthen our families and our communities and treat the fentanyl dealers for the murderers they are and put a focus on those that are struggling with mental illness and addiction, looking at how we, how we protect our most vulnerable Hoosiers, those that are struggling with addiction and mental illness, the unborn, the elderly, you know, the disabled. We're also going to look at how do we, how do we support and invest education more, you know, how do we create a cradle to career education system that focuses on the four R's, reading, writing, arithmetic, and reasoning. And then I want to modernize state government. And I know from being in local and state executive and legislative branches that I know how government works and how it can work better. We need to streamline it. We need to roll back unnecessary rules and regulations. And then we need to look at how to modernize government, making it work for people instead of people working for them. And I think it is that message, along with the hard work and the grassroots connections and organization that I have had from traveling the state for 10 years, that's why I won, and that is how we will win the election on May 7th. You feel that straw poll is, is indicative of where the party is but right the party now on some people. of these issues? Yeah, those are party people. Those are the yeah. rank and file. Those are the committeemen that are in the trenches every day. On some of those issues you mentioned, you, you've seemed to distance yourself somewhat from Governor Holcomb on some of these issues lately, whether it's the situation with the FSSA uh, or the IEDC or this DCS case that made national news this past week or, or COVID, the pandemic. How, how would you describe your working relationship with the governor these last few years? And given some of your recent remarks, do you have any regrets about joining him on the ticket and in this administration? You know, I'm proud of the accomplishments of this administration. And we did a lot of things really, really well. There are things we can improve upon, and that's why I'm running for governor. Mitch Daniels recently told Politico's Adam Wren that it was, quote, comical in his words to see the candidates for governor talking about uh, rolling back China or defending the border. He said, quote, who are they kidding? The job will ultimately be about other things. But what's your response to that, and, and what is going to be the biggest issue in this primary? Well, for me, it's about eliminating the state income tax. I'm the only candidate that is proposing eliminating taxes. And I want to be perfectly clear, Dan, I'm talking about a tax cut, 
not a tax replacement. And as former vice chair of the House Ways and Means Committee, as former auditor of state, I'm telling you we can do it and we have a plan Some to of your opponents that. have questioned if it's really feasible. Well, when they, say, when, they, when they say it's a gimmick, what they're really saying is government needs more of your money and you need less. And I'm saying there's a way that we can do it. And also along with that, let's look at modernizing state government. Let's look at cutting back our state agencies. Let's get rid of the rules and regulations that are unnecessary. And let's make government more transparent and accountable to the people that it serves. That's how we're going to realize efficiencies and cost savings that then we can use to be able to help Hoosiers. You feel the state can absorb that uh, at the same time it, we're dealing with this Medicaid shortfall and absolutely. all the other Absolutely. It has happening. to be phased in. Yeah. You know, it can happen overnight. It has to be phased in and we have to have triggers in place to protect against economic downturns. But we can do it if we limit government growth if we end wasteful government spending and we find efficiencies, we can absolutely do it over a period of time. Quite honestly, we're doing it right now because a couple of years ago, our income tax rate was 3.4%. Today, it's 3.1%. In 2027, it's going to drop to 2.9%. We're moving in that direction. I'm saying, let's go ahead and move quicker and make Indiana a no-income tax state. Which, by the way, where are people moving today? To Tennessee, Texas, and Florida, no income tax state. So we can put a couple thousand dollars back into the average Hoosier pocket every year and make Indiana a magnet for workers and for businesses moving our economy forward. I know we'll hear a lot more about this issue on the campaign trail and in our debate March 26. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor Crouch. You're welcome. I'm looking site. forward to it, Dan. We appreciate it. Meantime, on the other side of the aisle, two candidates filed to be on the ballot, but it could end up being just one. Tammy Dixon Tatum's candidacy being challenged because she was well short of the signature requirement. That goes to the Indiana Election Commission this coming week. If they vote to remove her from the ballot, then it's just Jennifer McCormick, uh, McCormick on the ballot for the Democrats. Another challenge going to the Election Commission in the race for for Senate where John Russ's place on the ballot could be in jeopardy. He's going up against Jim Banks in the GOP primary. Two Democrats in that race, Valerie McRae and also Mark Carmichael.